Oke, okay, halo semuanya. Selamat malam. Selamat, Selamat datang. Selamat datang di webinar Better System, Better Defense System. Uh, mohon teman-teman untuk nge berapa? Iya. Yeah. Uh, Oke. Okay, um, ini total ada oh, sudah ada 40 peserta yang masuk di Zoom session pada hari ini. Uh, perkenalkan dulu, uh, saya Vika Nurazam Wirastuti. Saya di sini sebagai manajer Bima Perkasa Academy. Dan ini kali pertama Bima Perkasa Academy menyelenggarakan webinar dan fokusnya bahas tentang defense. Um, dan senang sekali sih antusiasme teman-teman di baik di Jogja pun sampai luar Jogja juga kita punya berbagai uh, macam asal wis berbagai macam profesi yang join gitu ada pelatih mahasiswa pelajar juga so, ada juga pemain-pemain basket bahkan juga ada pemain pronya kita juga nih join dan tidak lupa ada bapak ibu guru dari sekolah yang juga join pada malam hari ini Uh, mungkin kita kayaknya kita sapa-sapa dulu nih ya kita sapa-sapa dulu teman-teman dari Duta Jaya sudah join kah ada teman-teman dari Duta Jaya Palembang terus ada juga teman-teman of course Bima Perkasa Academy Coach lalu ada teman-teman dari Klub Triple S ada Karanganyar Basketball dari Kalimantan Timur pun juga ada yang join malam hari ini spesial banget ada juga dan juga selamat datang untuk rekan-rekan uh, perbasi Jawa Tengah, perbasi DIY, teman-teman dari Pengkot, perbasi Yogyakarta, Pemkap Bantul, Pemkap Kulon Progo, Gunung Kidul dan juga teman-teman dari berbagai universitas ya. Uh, ada juga teman-teman dari UKM kita juga invite teman-teman dari UKM untuk bisa hadir pada malam hari ini. Uh, Coach Dave atau ya kita manggilnya Coach Dave ya kalau di sehari-hari gitu Coach Dave, David Singleton itu memang coach yang cukup concern di bidang uh, di, di defense dan juga uh, untuk malam hari ini kita akan fokus di bahas defense tetapi akan lebih fokus di bagaimana membangun sistem yang defensif gitu. Sistem defense itu gimana sih? Bagaimana sih Coach Dave dengan contoh karena Coach Dave ini kan sudah melalang buana di berbagai klub, dari klub profesional di berbagai negara ini. Jadi kita akan tahu lebih dalam juga tentang bagaimana Coach Dave membangun sistem defense di timnya. Terutama kalau sekarang karena di Bima Perkasa. Jadi bagaimana sih Coach Dave membangun defense di Bang BPDI Bima Perkasa. Uh, sebelum kita mulai, kita membacakan rundown webinar yang terlebih dahulu. Uh, open, yang pertama adalah opening, terus nanti ada akan ada opening speech dari founder Bang BPDI Bima Perkasa, Pak Dr. Edi Wibowo. Lalu ada sambutan juga dari Ketua Umum Pengkot Perbasi Yogyakarta tahun 2021-2025, Kak Anthony Regan. Lalu juga nanti ada perkenalan Coach Dave. Lalu yang ditunggu-tunggu adalah penjelasan dari Coach Dave tentang sistem defensif. Dan juga nanti akan ada Q&A. Jadi teman-teman yang sudah punya pertanyaan, bahkan sudah disiapkan sebelum, ataupun nanti di perjalanan kita webinar ada yang mau disampaikan, silakan. Um, begitu teman-teman nanti yang sudah join terima kasih. Oke, okay. uh, okay, selanjutnya kita tidak usah panjang lebar, <laughs> kita langsung aja ya karena pasti udah nggak sabar nih. Kita langsung aja undang founder Bank BPDDI Bima Perkasa, Bapak Dokter Edi Wibowo. Di waktu ini persilakan. Baik, terima kasih uh, Vika. Uh, Salam olahraga, ya. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Coach Dave, for being 
willing to be a speaker ya yeah? uh, to be a speaker and share your experience for to all us and congratulations to the participant because have decided to participate in this uh, meeting ya yeah? this afternoon jadi uh, terima kasih teman-teman semua dan selamat karena kalian sudah memutuskan ikut di pertemuan ini karena saya yakin uh, pertemuan Battle Defense System ini akan berguna buat kita semua. Terima kasih juga untuk uh, Regen yang Pak Regen yang sudah apa uh, membantu di di acara ini. Ya seperti kita ketahui pandemic is still prolong ya dan kita sebagai pecinta basket uh, ya harus kreatif ya as basket lover we have to be kreatif and then uh, kegiatan-kegiatan kreatif seperti pada malam hari ini itu sangat diperlukan ya karena kita tetap harus menjaga kesehatan dengan protokol kesehatan ya dan tentunya kita juga harus kreatif untuk tetap menambah ilmu menambah wawasan menambah pengetahuan ya jadi eh, sekali lagi terima kasih dan pesan saya untuk seluruh peserta tolong manfaatkan pertemuan ini untuk belajar untuk memperdalam pengetahuan yang nantinya bisa dibagikan ke anak didik ya karena saya lihat di sini banyak sekali pelatih yang join ya sehingga kualitas basket nasional kita akan semakin membaik ya apalagi 2023 we will apa ya host ya untuk uh, Piala Dunia ya jadi tentunya uh, gambaran basket di nasional kita juga harus bagus di mata internasional nah usaha-usaha yang Bima Perkasa lakukan itu ya seperti ini yang yang mudah-mudahan apa yang kita lakukan ini bisa berkontribusi untuk perbasketan nasional kita. Demikian kata sambutan dari saya. Waktu saya serahkan ke Mbak Vika. Salam olahraga. Salam olahraga Pak Edi. Terima kasih Pak Edi atas sambutannya. Jadi ya memang betul di Bima Perkasa Jogja kami cukup concern untuk istilahnya berkontribusi juga di perbasketan nasional dengan as simple as this at first nanti ya ke depan kita bakal banyak kegiatan-kegiatan lagi apalagi kita punya coach yang keren banget dan juga wah kita juga kedatangan coach Oki Tamtilah itu dari Pelita Jaya Jakarta halo coach wah biasa nih ya oke okay, uh, kita lanjutkan lagi Uh, terima kasih untuk Pak Edi dan selanjutnya adalah sambutan dari Ketua Umum baru ini, <laughs> Ketua Umum Pengkot Berbasi Yogyakarta periode 2021 sampai 2025. Nah, langsung saja kita sambut Anthony Regen waktu dan tempat ya. kami silakan. Selamat malam Vika. Ya, selamat malam Ko. Selamat malam, Pak Bapak Dr. Edi Wibowo, selaku founder Bank BPD DIY Bima Perkasa. Malam, Raja. Terima kasih atas kesempatan dan waktunya. Saya selaku Ketua Perbasi Kota Jogja, terima kasih kepada Bima Perkasa yang telah menyelenggarakan acara ini. Semoga ini menjadi awal yang bagus di awal tahun 2021 ini untuk kemajuan bola basket Indonesia, khususnya kota Jogja. Semoga ilmu yang disharingkan oleh Coach Dave dapat bermanfaat bagi kita semua. Dan kita sebagai warga Jogja cukup bangga mempunyai klub profesional yang berlaga di Liga IPL. Yang juga perhatian juga ke perkembangan bola basket di Jogja. Sekian kata sambutan dari saya. Semoga acara berlangsung dengan lancar dan setelah acara ini ilmunya bermanfaat. Sekian dan terima kasih. Oke, terima kasih Koregen. 
Pak Senang banget ya, ya kedatangan ini ketua ketum baru. Nah, tapi selain ada Bapak Ketum Pengkot, ada juga nih Bapak Sekretaris Pengda Perbasi DIY. Kobo, apa kabar Kobo? Sebentar. Iya. Ya, selamat malam Vika, selamat Halo, malam. Halo, selamat malam. Ready, selamat malam. Apa Halo, Indonesia? malam Kubu, terima kasih. Ya, malam Kubu. Rekan-rekan semua. Selamat malam Kubu. Uh, Oke, okay. terima kasih Kubu. Dan kayaknya kita akan mulai lanjut ke sesi berikutnya, yaitu perkenalan Coach David Singleton. di mana hmm, tepatnya Desember 2020 ya Coach Steve ini datang ke Jogja dan akhirnya melatih tim kebanggaan Jogja nih Bang BBD di Bima Perkasa dan Coach Steve ini memiliki berbagai pengalaman ya di berbagai tim profesional nggak cuma di satu negara tapi di berbagai negara oke kita sebutkan dulu dari Jadi 2015 Coach Dave di New Zealand di The Nelson Giant di mana Coach Dave berhasil membuat kapten timnas Selandia baru Mika Bukana menjadi pebasket yang sangat diperhitungkan di Asia Pasifik. One thing. Terus selanjutnya Coach Dave pindah ke Vietnam ke Kanto Catfish Vietnam lalu juga lanjut lagi melatih di Saigon Heat Vietnam. tiga musim yang akhirnya menjadi juara Liga Vietnam yang paling keren nih Coach Steve juga membentuk pemain yaitu Tuleo menjadi top score dan yang terakhir kemasuk musim lalu ya musim lalu Coach Steve di Pacific Cesar Surabaya dan uh, bisa membuat pemain muda Indra Muhammad terpilih menjadi Defensive Player of the Year uh, ini sangat pencapaian-pencapaian yang luar biasa dari Coach Dave dan saya ber, kami berpikir uh, kenapa enggak nih Coach Dave dan dengan berbagai pengalaman dan ilmunya kita sharing dan ya siapa tahu gitu kan nanti ada yang bisa mati di berbagai negara juga atau di berbagai tim basket lainnya gitu ya itu perkenalan singkat tentang Coach Dave um, kami juga ini sih mau memperkenalkan Uh, translator kami ada Kak, Kak Dia Ayu Pratiwi Halo Kak Dia Ayu dan juga uh, sebelum kita mulai acara ini sih mau nge-share rules uh, dari webinar pada malam hari ini nanti uh, karena ini dengan menggunakan bahasa Inggris dan akan dibantu translate oleh Kak Tiwi Apabila teman-teman, rekan-rekan semua merasa kurang jelas, nanti bisa ditanyakan kembali atau ditanya lagi ketika sesi tanya-jawab. Nah, terus di sesi tanya-jawab, teman-teman dapat mengeklik kode raise hand untuk tanya. Tapi itu nanti ketika kita sesi tanya-jawab. begitu. Dan sesi tanya-jawabnya itu persis setelah materi dari Coach Dave selesai. gitu ya teman-teman. Kalau nanti ada yang kurang jelas nanti bisa tanya ke di chat roomnya boleh tanya dulu. Misalkan ada yang kurang jelas mau langsung ditanyakan dengan raise hand di zoom boleh banget. Um, begitu kita tidak usah panjang lebar lagi kita langsung saja menyambut nih coach kebanggaan bang BBD di Bima Perkasa coach David Singleton. Halo coach. Hello, how are we doing out there everybody? Uh, appreciate you guys all uh, joining in and uh, very happy to be here and talk some basketball with all you guys on this uh, on this Zoom call. Uh, look forward to uh, having a good night and uh, look forward to the questions that you guys might have at the end. Um, but I, again, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on here and uh, taking your time Uh, your busy schedules to uh, listen and talk some basketball. Thank you. 
Coach uh, Dev uh, menyampaikan salam untuk semua peserta dan berterima kasih sudah menyempatkan diri untuk bergabung dalam uh, Zoom seminar Better Defensive System dari Coach Dev. Uh, terima kasih untuk semuanya. Semoga ke depan kita bisa lancar dengan acara ini. Ini kemarin ini ada video kedatangan dari Coach Dev ya. Kemarin belajar uh, pakai bahasa Jawa. Uh, you learn Kulonuan? <laughs> yeah, I learn Kulonuan, which I still don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but uh, I guess it's the best way to greet everyone here. So, yes. Okay. Thank you. Discussion point. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll just start out here. Um, first of all, uh, like I said, we're all coaches here. And uh, I just want to start out by saying that this is really just about what I do and what I believe in and kind of what I've learned um, through the time of my coaching and different things that I've taken from different coaches and different systems uh, over my playing career as well as coaching career. And so my whole point to that is there's no correct way to do anything. Uh, it's just the way that, that we do it here and it's the way that I believe. And so um, that's one thing I want you guys to understand. This is about building, not necessarily being better on defense. Jadi disampaikan sama Coach Dev bahwa kita semua di sini ada, ada mungkin ada banyak pelatih di sini juga dan tidak ada yang benar ataupun salah. Uh, tapi ini adalah sharing dari Coach Dev tentang apa yang dia lakukan selama ini, berbeda-beda di beberapa tim yang sudah dia pernah uh, latih. Dan tadi poinnya di building, uh, bukan membuat ini yang better, ini yang lebih baik, tapi ini it's all about building ya Coach. Correct. Ini tentang uh, membangun uh, sistem pertahanan atau defensive system. Seperti itu. Oke, okay, so... Um... Some things we're going to be going through tonight is the why. So obviously, why is defense important? Um, some of you may already know. I'll just give you my reasoning behind it. Um, we'll also be talking about uh, identifying your team. So understanding what players you have, uh, what are they capable of playing, uh, what are they comfortable with playing with. Um, there, you know, different strengths and weaknesses. So some of those are some of the things uh, we'll keep going. Okay, jadi. Uh... Uh, diskusi uh, poin-poin diskusi pada malam hari ini adalah uh, the why kenapa uh, defensive ini penting menurut coach Dev lalu bagaimana memahami tim yang kita tangani uh, seperti apa kondisinya ke strength uh, kekuatannya apa weaknessnya apa dan uh, apa yang membuat uh, apa yang paling nyaman bisa digunakan dengan uh, setelah mengidentifikasi uh, tim yang diampu Uh, then also like you as a coach, right? So what is your what is your vision on your defensive identity? Uh, what what type of culture do you want to bring? What kind of system do you want to bring in? Um, does that mix well with the players that you have? Uh, and you really want to kind of let your players know from the beginning, uh, all members, staff, players, everything, kind of what your identity will be going forward. So they know your expectations uh, as you guys begin to train and practice. Then tentang defense identity ini, Uh, bagaimana sebagai pelatih uh, memberikan visi dan sudah jelas dari awal diketahui oleh pemain, staff dan seluruh uh, yang terlibat dalam kepelatihan uh, defense apa yang uh, bisa diterima oleh mereka lalu ekspektasi dari pelatih itu apa uh, untuk para pemain maupun seluruh staffnya. Okay, the next thing is going to be key statistics for good defense. Uh, that's again in our opinion. Uh, in my eyes, this is these are the stats that have translated well uh, to winning and losing games. Uh, and we believe here that uh, if we do well in these categories, that uh, that that will translate to winning or giving us a chance to be in the game. Untuk key stats for good defense ini uh, dari pandangan Coach Dave, tiap pelatih mungkin memiliki uh, beberapa kunci-kunci statistik yang bisa menjadi pegangan uh, bagi pelatih untuk Uh, kunci uh, statistik apa yang bisa jadi faktor kemenangan buat tim uh, atau mendapatkan kesempatan untuk menang yang bisa jadi pegangan jadi kayak tiap pelatih pasti memiliki pegangan-pegangan itu 
Okay, and then the last two parts will um, will be a little bit more in uh, depth, a little bit more interactive. I'm going to be showing uh, some clips from our practices, some of the things that we do on a daily basis, uh, kind of like our EDD everyday drills is, is kind of what I, I, I call them. And these are some man to man principles. Uh, we'll show some clips from our from our drills that we run uh, pretty much on a daily basis, as well as some our zone, uh, what we do on zone. Won't give you everything, but I'll give you some things on the zones and then, uh, you know, how we practice it and, and what we look at for that. So those will be the last two. I'm going to make sure you're not sharing everything I got. Correct. <laughs> not everything. Jadi Coach Steve akan berbagi lebih dalam lagi soal apa sih yang dia lakukan di harian di dalam latihan. Seperti ya itu untuk men-to-men, prinsip-prinsip men-to-men maupun latihan-latihan zone defense-nya Coach. Nanti bakal di-share juga beberapa video latihannya tim Bang BPDDI Bima Perkasa sebagian ya sebagian aja yep. just part of it ya yeah. that's right that's right okay so now we can uh, move on to the to the next one okay yep why okay uh, so this is the why uh, pretty kind of you know some uh, some funny pictures up here Um, although I will say James Harden plays better defense now uh, than probably in this picture. Um, but there's a lot of different defenses. There's a lot of different schemes. There's a lot of different systems. And today's game, uh, basketball is pushing away from it a bit. And it's a lot very focused on uh, offense. It's catered towards offense. Uh, everything is about shooting and scoring and putting up 150 points and all of these you know, crazy numbers. Um, but I'm a big believer in the way I grew up, the way that I was taught is that defense is, uh, is a way that will keep you in the game and that can really win you games. Um, and so I think it's a valuable part uh, of your team. And I think it's a big part of the culture that you want to build. Yeah. Uh, defense is valuable, a part of the team culture. Jadi mungkin memang uh, di basket yang sekarang menurut Coach Steve memang ada banyak... Uh, fokus pada shooting and scoring tapi dia adalah big believer uh, mm -hmm. dia sangat percaya bahwa uh, defense itu adalah bagian dari uh, kultur tim di mana itu uh, dia sangat percaya bahwa dengan defense yang baik maka akan membuat kita stay on the game tetap uh, bisa uh, memenangkan pertandingan dan bisa juga intinya bisa terus uh, lebih baik lagi Okay, uh, and then this one, yeah, like this is kind of clear. It's a uh, good defense can lead to easy offense. Uh, I truly believe this, just the simple fact that uh, if you really lock in on defense and you get a bunch of stops, you guys really are connected and playing hard and playing well. Uh, you get steals, uh, you force bad shots, uh, you're able to get out and run and, uh, and uh, play in transition and kind of get easier buckets where the other team can't set up their defense. Um, so I think that if you play really good defense, uh, I think it can lead to easier points and it makes it an easier game for you as a coach to call uh, less plays, less half court sets, and you can get out and run. So we like to believe in that our defense can really help us play faster and get us to get out and run and uh, play in transition and make the game a little bit easier on offense for us. Uh, untuk defense can lead to easy offense. Uh lanjutan dari tim kultur tadi saat udah istilahnya kayak setelan defense-nya itu baik maka akan membuka peluang-peluang untuk bisa uh, melakukan offense yang uh, lebih mudah ya like what, what what do you mean about like less less play less uh, just because if you're getting stops you're getting steals uh, you're you're able to run in transition oh. and you don't have to worry about a call you're you're beating the team down to score yeah. uh, in transition um, instead of having to set up a play and call an offense and Uh, have to really work to, to score. Uh, you can get uh, points in transition a little bit easier. Jadi saat uh, bisa defense dengan baik, bisa entah mendapat uh, steal bola atau uh, bisa uh, maka lebih mudah untuk transisi tanpa harus set play lagi. Jadi tinggal cepat untuk melakukan uh, transisi ke untuk offense. Yep. Oke. Okay. Yeah, and then the uh, the next the next reason I, I believe in is uh, is defense doesn't require talent. So one thing uh, that I truly uh, believed in since the time that I learned it, um, I used to know kids growing up that were 
uh, really not that great of basketball players overall, specifically offensively, uh, but they could stay on the court and uh, they can play with me any day of the week because they were able to play defense and uh, they were committed and they, they were able to give effort and fight and uh, desire and passion and focus on the details of, uh, of defense, um, regardless if they have any offensive talent or any skills set like that. Um, so to me, it doesn't require talent. It requires effort. Uh, the want to it comes from inside of you um, and, it, and it comes from the competitive uh, uh, spirit, the mentality. Uh, well, maksudnya Coach Steve pada defense doesn't require talent ini adalah Coach Steve pernah melihat uh, beberapa pemain yang belum baik secara offense, uh, tapi, uh, tapi dia bisa bermain karena committed, fokus detail pada defense, maka dia bisa uh, menunjukkan kompetitifnya mereka sehingga uh, kompetitifnya uh, mereka sehingga meskipun belum baik pada offense tapi mereka tetap bisa main karena defense ini uh, adalah uh, dari dalam dari dalam jadi kemauan untuk uh, melakukan defense maka mereka bisa tetap bermain uh, secara kompetitif. Yeah, and that kind of leads into the, to the last part in which I talk to my every team that I've ever coached about. Uh, it's the way that I was brought up playing uh, as a young as a, as a young basketball player is about the competitive spirit, uh, the mentality, the approach that you have to have uh, on the defensive end um, because it's, it's not easy. It's not an easy job. It's not easy to stop. Everything is catered towards the offense, the fouls, uh, the points. All of these things is catered towards the offense and you have to have this competitive nature inside of you that uh, that your team has to have not only individually, but your team has to have uh to get stops um to really take it personal your matchup individually as well as a team and that's something that we put guys through at practice uh we try to do as many competition competitive drills that we can um and we try to make it uh important that uh people are really taking it personal with their matchups uh because i think that that breeds uh, and that that is contagious uh and it spreads around the team if, if everybody's that way Uh, menurut Coach Dave, untuk poin competitiveness ini uh, bukan tugas yang mudah karena uh, ini harus dibangun tidak hanya pada individu-individu tapi secara tim juga. Jadi bagaimana untuk menumbuhkan spirit kompetitif ini bisa dilakukan dengan drill-drill yang uh, kompetitif. Jadi mungkin win, ada faktor. So it's like on the drill it's like winning, lose, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's just, you, you know, you always want to put uh, something at the end of it. So somebody wins, somebody loses. So yeah. it, it makes somebody want to fight a little bit more for it. Yeah. Uh, it shows really who on your team as a coach. It shows you who uh, uh, cares about winning and who really doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a good uh, it's a good measuring stick to know uh, who those players are on your team and also to obviously push your message and culture that we are all going to be competitive and that's the way that we're going to be successful. Ya, jadi memang tipenya Coach Dave ini uh, dia akan membuat bagaimana defense ini jadi suatu hal yang personal buat masing-masing uh, individu, bagaimana mereka benar-benar uh, merasakan uh, aku harus menang. Jadi memang dari drillnya memang banyak drill-drill uh, yang buat ada yang menang, ada yang kalah. Uh, jadi ini harus ditumbuhkan dari individu-individu di setiap tim agar satu udah kompetitif maka ini akan uh, tersebar sebagai uh, budaya di timnya. Yep. Oke, okay. okay. go to the next one. Oke, okay. so this is just a quick example. Um, so this is about the game a couple weeks ago. Now Brooklyn is playing a lot better now and they're actually starting to play a little bit better defense as of late. Um, but this is a game that they lost, obviously, in the last few minutes. You guys know Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden is on the team. Uh, but you look at the score here, it's 150 points, basically, uh, scored in a basketball game. And uh, that's the best offensive team, which is the Brooklyn Nets, number one in the NBA. Uh, but at the same time, they're the worst defense in the league, uh, number one in the NBA. So it's a give and take. Some nights you'll win, but other nights like this, Uh, if you don't get enough stops, if you don't uh, value your defense enough, uh, you can lose to a team like uh, Washington, who is a very, very uh, bad basketball team at this point um, because of your defensive uh, focus, effort, and energy. And so um, so this is, this is just an example of the number one offensive team in the league, 
three of the best players in the world, Hall of Famers on one team, and they lose because they gave up 150 points. Uh, ini hanya uh, contoh sederhana saja dari Coach Steve, di mana Brooklyn Nets ini adalah uh, tim dengan uh, offense yang terbaik, uh, dengan, dan ada tiga pemain terbaik di sana, namun uh, mereka kalah karena juga uh, kurang kuat di defense-nya, mereka tidak cukup tidak punya cukup stop tidak tidak kurang menghargai defense mereka dan uh, maka karena defense sangat perlu fokus effort dan energy ini hanya contoh sederhana aja dari coach Steve untuk lanjut ke materi selanjutnya okay, so that's just an example okay so this is uh, this is something we preach to our team uh, people call it different things in the coaching world Um, when I played high school, it was called the basket line, uh, basically, which is the line that runs, the imaginary line that runs between each basket and all the way through the court. Uh, but I learned uh, overseas, actually, my first year as a professional coach in New Zealand uh, from one of my really good coaching friends uh, to call it something that matters more to the players, um, something that connects the message a little bit more to the players. Um, so instead of saying basket line, um, we, we like to call it home. Uh, so we like to protect our home. Everybody has a uh, home is important to everyone. You're not going to just let anybody in your house. You're not going to just let anybody run through your front door. Um, you're going to make sure it's secure and safe. And so that's how we protect our basket. And we want to make sure that uh, we always talk about somebody being at home. Uh, pengalaman coach Steve itu dia pernah dilatih dan untuk menjaga image sebenarnya ini kayak imaginary line sebuah garis yang imajiner dan harus dijaga baik-baik oleh setiap pemain. Namun saat pertama kali dia berlatih di New Zealand dan dia berlatih dengan uh, ada pelatih lain yang punya coach Steve ini menyebutnya dengan home yang harapannya karena ini lebih mereka mencari sesuatu yang lebih bisa uh, relate dan connect dengan pemain-pemain apa yang penting buat mereka akhirnya mereka sepakat ini sebagai home atau rumah setiap orang pasti akan menjaga rumahnya karena rumah itu penting maka bagaimana setiap pemain itu uh, komit dan uh, akan menjaga uh, home-nya agar tidak uh, dilewati lawan home ini Brad the basketball line is I mean, Where from the hoop to the other hoop, so it's just imaginary line oh, from both hoops. Yeah. So, ini yang imaginary. Jadi, buat imaginary yang uh, benar-benar melindungi uh, ja, uh, apa ring ring yes. basket tim kita dan call it home. Correct. Karena ini penting buat kita. This uh, this has to do with uh, most of you coaches probably know this, but this has to do with uh, with our um, with our weak side help, right? So, our weak side help. This is what we call Um, and you're going you're gonna to see what we do with it later uh, and how we're, we're set up for it uh, to be home in some later videos. So this is just uh, a little bit of history. Nanti akan ada video supaya lebih bisa terbayang apa yang dimaksud Steve dengan home ini. Ini cuma ilustrasi saja. Oke. Okay, next one. Okay, so like we said before uh, in the rundown, now we're going to move on to identifying your team. Um, again, this is kind of our way of doing it. There's no right way, uh, but we kind of, what I like to do is I like to look at the team I have. So when I first came here to Bima, I, you know, I was constantly asking who's on the team, what's the roster look like, watching video of these guys, uh, watching past games of guys, um, seeing what, what they're capable of doing and maybe what they're a little bit comfortable with doing as well. So um, that's kind of how uh, I want to, you know, start by assessing Uh, the roster and then kind of going from there uh, basically depending on what kind of system we want to set up. Uh, jadi untuk identifier team ini balik lagi uh, tidak ada benar salah ya tidak ada yang paling benar dalam konteks uh, konteks ini uh, namun yang dilakukan coach Steve saat pertama kali menangani, menangani tim adalah uh, dia akan mempelajari siapa saja yang ada di dalam roster lalu dia akan mempelajari videonya bagaimana uh, apa yang 
akan mampu dilakukan oleh pemain-pemain yang ada di roster. Lalu uh, ini adalah assessment, hmm. assessment dari pelatih agar bisa tahu apa yang bisa dia uh, gunakan dalam tim ini. So um, these are some of the things that I kind of ask myself, and maybe you guys can use it uh, for yourselves as well. But does does my team have capable one-on-one defenders? So uh, when you turn on the tape and you watch the team that you're coaching, or you go to a practice or you go to a game and you're watching kids that you coach uh, or that you're going to coach, can they play? Can they guard? Uh, are they good defenders one-on-one? Um, and that can kind of base your defense on depending on if you're going to play an aggressive style of defense, uh, up in your face, kind of pressure, or maybe your team isn't the greatest in one-on-one and you have to work on it a lot. So maybe you, you start out by playing a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more packed in. Um, not allowing so many, you know, dribble penetrations and uh, forcing those kickouts. So I look at it like that. Um, you can always develop and work on defenders, right? It's just through practice. But um, depending on the time that you have, depending on uh, the player that you have, you, you that's a question that I ask uh, coming in. Uh, jadi dari ini beberapa pertanyaan yang uh, buat pegangannya Coach Steve uh, untuk menangani sebuah tim. Apakah dalam tim ada yang memiliki kemampuan one on one secara baik atau tidak jika ada berarti kan uh, dia bisa lebih dengan style agresif mm-hmm. if you have one-on-one. yeah if you feel like they're good defenders okay, exactly. jika mereka defender yang baik maka dia uh, akan menggunakan uh, style yang lebih agresif namun jika semisal uh, timnya tidak ada yang uh, memiliki skill yang kita tentunya kita bisa bekerja uh, bisa uh, mengusahakan itu tapi tergantung lagi sama waktu sama pemainnya juga jadi misalkan tidak ada pemain yang uh, kondisinya sangat baik dalam one on one defenders maka mungkin stylenya akan lebih relax back in the uh, just by playing in the nails playing a tighter defense not so aggressive and out oh. you want to just be a little bit tighter in. lebih ketat uh, ikutin flownya tapi Uh, tidak yang agresif jika memang punya pemain yang memiliki kemampuan one on one yang baik. Okay, um, and again, like I said, you can always train these people to be better. You can always practice it. You can always put them through drills, like we do one on one all the time, two on two drills, three on three drills that uh, require people to uh, showcase their defending ability. And if they're not good at it, we continue to work on it every day and. And that's how you know people that I've been around have really gotten good at it. Is obviously going against somebody one on one. I think that's a lost art, and I think that people have to play more one on one in order to be a better defender. Tapi tentunya kita bisa melatih uh, untuk bisa lebih baik uh, get better every day dengan cara ya bisa dengan two on one, two on two, one on one, dan ini bisa dilakukan uh, dengan porsi lebih dalam latihan. Uh, dengan begitu maka uh, bisa meningkatkan kemampuan uh, defend uh, one-on-one uh, pemain yang kita miliki. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the next thing I, I would ask uh, myself is, uh, are the players on the roster comfortable with zone schemes? Um, so if you, you inherit a roster or you have players that come in that have played two-three zone for a lot of their life or played uh, some sort of zone, three-two zone, one-two-two, whatever you call it, um, do they have a history of playing it? Are they comfortable with years and years of experience with it? And maybe that's those are defenses that you can use uh, as, when you start coaching, and uh, you can implement those things. Um, just a quick example: uh, there was a time where a team in my league a couple seasons ago uh, went all the way to the finals, uh, running a one-two-two zone the the most most of the entire year. Uh, they probably played 90% zone and 10% man, and the coach that inherited the roster knew that. These guys grew up playing zone, and in their previous teams, they played zone, and uh, he kind of took it and ran with it and put his own twist on it, and he ran zone 90% of the year, and they went to the finals. So it's something you can think about, and if your players are more comfortable, it's a smart coaching uh, decision. Sebenarnya pelatih juga, kita perlu tahu apa yang paling nyaman untuk pemain-pemain yang kita miliki, karena... Jadi sangat penting untuk uh, cari tahu dari uh, historinya, sejarahnya pemain-pemain ini. Biasanya mereka uh, defense sistemnya itu zone atau man-to-man. Uh, dari situ maka itu akan bisa di, uh, 
diidentifikasi oleh pelatih dan mencari sistem yang paling nyaman untuk pemain-pemain. Karena balik lagi, it depends on time, so if their history is better than... Well, it just depends on if you know that they're, you've done your homework on them and you know that this player is more comfortable with his own and he talks to you and you communicate that with him and you've seen it mm -hmm. on video, then you can say maybe we should run it more and you can make that decision yourself. Karena contohnya di beberapa musim yang lalu, uh, Coach Dev uh, bersama tim Let's in Vietnam. Yes. Ya, waktu dia di Vietnam, uh, so, dia tahu histori latihan pemain-pemainnya adalah 90% uh, zone dan 10% man. Jadi yang dia lakukan adalah uh, mostly kebanyakan menggunakan zone dan mereka bisa uh, sampai ke final. Jadi karena uh, balik lagi. Uh, sebagai pelatih itu cara yang smart menurut coach Steve untuk lebih tahu histori dari pemain-pemain uh, dan apa yang paling nyaman atau cocok buat mereka. Okay. Okay. So then uh, another thing I ask myself is uh, as a coach, what am I most comfortable with? So uh, where are you at in your coaching, you know, journey, your path? Um, are you comfortable with man to man? Are you comfortable teaching it? Uh, are you comfortable teaching zone? Uh, those are some of the other things that you have to be uh, aware of as a coach. And uh, what do you feel best uh, teaching the guys? Um, and so that has to factor in to your decision with the team. And uh, that's something that I, you know, always factor in early in my career. Um, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in a zone system. Um, I knew the basics of it, but most of my life, it was a man-to-man -man pressure, all of these type of things. And obviously, as I continue to grow as a coach and, go around clinics and, you know, meeting different coaches throughout my journey. Uh, I got really uh, in tune with zone and different schemes and different ways to run it. And uh, I'm much more comfortable with it now. Um, so that's something you have to consider. As a coach, what do you feel most comfortable with? Jadi, uh, seperti pemain, pelatih juga memiliki pengalamannya sendiri, perjalanannya sendiri. Dan Coach Steve itu tumbuh uh, dengan uh, lebih banyak dilatih dengan cara man to man dan uh, so you're like a bit early you're like uh, learning about man to man most of my so life I like. played man to man and learned man to man learn about the, yes the, correct as I got older and started to coach and I started to go overseas and coach then I started to learn more about zone jadi sebagai pelatih so, juga Uh, mencoba untuk mengidentifikasi dirinya sendiri, aku uh, coach dia sendiri, sebagian besar dia dulu latihannya adalah man, man to man, namun sebagai pelatih tentunya dia juga harus belajar uh, untuk mencoba uh, uh, defense yang zone, maka untuk saat ini coach Steve juga udah lebih nyaman dengan uh, zone. Okay, and then the last thing uh, is strengths and weaknesses. Uh, what are they for your team? Um, so, for example, this is just basically, uh, are you a team with size? Uh, are you a team that's slow? You don't have a lot of foot speed. Uh, you might not be the most athletic team. Or are you a team that's small, quick, fast? Uh, you don't have a lot of size. Uh, so you have to hustle. You have to play a little bit faster. You have to play a little bit harder. You have to speed the game up a little bit more. And uh, so just, those are some of the things you have to also identify what uh, works for your team best. I've had teams in the past where we press all the time. We've had one big man on the whole roster. So we're small and we fight and we hustle and, and we speed the game up and we play fast. And I've had teams in the past where we have big guys all over the place. So we play more zone. Uh, we cater a little bit more towards the bigger guys. Uh, we use our size and our length a little bit more. Um, and so that also should factor in Uh, to your decision, and it does here for me. Ya, yeah, untuk uh, strengths dan weaknesses yang dimaksud oleh Coach Steve ini, uh, sebagai pelatih juga bisa menganalisa uh, dari beberapa faktor seperti size, speed, apakah atletis atau tidak, maka itu akan mempengaruhi uh, cara defensif uh, sebuah tim yang ia tangani. Misalkan, dia pernah uh, melatih tim yang Uh, kebanyakan dari pemainnya adalah ber, ber, kurang apa kurang secara size dia cuma punya satu center maka yang dia lakukan adalah zone more zone yeah more zone Lebih ke, more systems where because you're bigger you're a little bit slower you're not as many good one on one defenders so you play zone because you have size and you can oh, uh, make up for that 
kalau yang waktu dia pemainnya size-nya kurang maka dia lebih agresif if it's more yeah. yeah. faster quick make the game and, faster yeah. exactly dan saat misalkan pemainnya lebih slow tapi punya size maka akan lebih fokus ke zone okay all right so those are some of the things that you want to identify okay so this is a a, a great team picture of us right um, so this is uh, this is our team this season Uh, this is our roster, and uh, what I like about the team right now is um, number one, uh, we have I think we have the flexibility uh, and the ability to be multiple with our system. We have size um, with some of our bigger guys, and then we have some sp speed and quickness. And some of you coaches may have that uh, for most of your teams. Maybe everybody has that, um, but some teams sometimes you don't. And I've been in those situations where you don't, um, but specifically with our team, uh, I like to be multiple. Uh, it gives us flexibility. So that means we can go uh, man, we can go zone. We can turn up the heat sometimes and play small and press. Uh, we can go big and play uh, bigger lineups. Um, and, and then again, like it says on the bottom, it all depends on you know your matchup, the team you're playing, as well as what your game plan is for that game specifically. So. All of that goes into to play. Tadi yang sebelumnya dijelaskan kan soal yang kecil lebih agresif, sedangkan yang punya size uh, lebih comfortable dengan uh, zone. Uh, nah, untuk sebagai contoh yang di sini itu, itu ada pemain yang ada size-nya, ada yang punya size, ada ada yang kecil punya speed. Uh, maka dengan mungkin hampir semua pelatih juga memiliki komposisi uh, pemain yang lengkap. Dengan begitu maka tim bisa lebih fleksibel, bisa multiple, uh, karena ada yang punya size dan ada juga yang uh, punya kecepatan. Namun mungkin ada situasi juga yang tidak punya, uh, tidak bisa fleksibel ataupun multiple, uh, maka itu juga harus disesuaikan oleh uh, pelatih. Dalam konteks yang bisa multiple dan fleksibel ini, ya tadi bisa bisa zone, bisa man to man, kadang turn up, turn up the heat itu bisa lebih Uh, Or slow it down. Ya, bisa lebih cepat lagi atau bisa pelan, bisa press. Ya, tapi balik lagi di, uh, tergantung pada uh, kecocokan dan uh, game plan dari pelatih. Okay. okay, so that's our identity with Bima. Okay, um, are we on? Defe okay, so defensive identity. Uh, so this is the next part uh, you want to look at is what's, what's your identity? What do you want your team to uh, be known for? What do you want your team to play like? Uh, what do you want your team to represent um, the way that they play, how they play? After you finish the game, what does the other team say? Uh, what, what do people say about you? Um, and so that's, that's kind of uh, what this identity is. And uh, for us, it's physicality, number one. Uh, we want to be physical. We want to hit first. Uh, we don't want anything easy around the hoop. Um, and we want to make the other team uh, feel our presence. Jadi, uh, uh, all identity ini adalah bagaimana tim kita itu dikenal oleh orang-orang, bagaimana cara mereka bermain, apa yang di, uh, kesan apa yang didapatkan oleh uh, tim lawan setelah bermain dengan tim kita. Dan untuk Bima Perkasa Defensive, Identity adalah yang pertama adalah physicality yang dimaksud dengan physicality ini adalah uh, bagaimana bima perkasa uh, harus uh, hit first harus lawan duluan uh, enggak, dan ini nggak boleh mudah buat uh, lawannya bima perkasa. So yeah, and again, the, all of these all of these points go back to the drills that you're going to do. Uh, it's not only the message that you send to the team, but you have to put them in these situations and demand. Uh, these things that you want so that they get comfortable, they get used to it, and they understand that this is going to be uh, what we identify as when we play the games. Dan ini harus dibuat sebagai kultur, sebagai budaya, di mana um, setiap individu harus merasa uh, selalu menang. Jadi, uh, memang ini bisa dilakukan melalui drill-drill yang kompetitif tadi. Namun, message utamanya adalah ini, jadikan ini sebagai kultur dan mereka sudah biasa dengan uh, competitiveness. Okay. So again, so getting to that point, the competitive culture, 
putting putting them in situations where they play one on one, they play two on two. Um, you make it to a score. So a lot of things that we do is we'll play scrimmages, we'll play drills where it's defensive defensive oriented. Everything that happens uh, is based upon the defense winning, not the offense. I've been in teams where every time you play a scrimmage or do a drill, it's about if the offense scores to win. But we do drills where the defense gets stops uh, to win the drill. So you get, let's say five stops, seven stops, four stops uh, in a drill or a game, uh, and then you win. And that kind of uh, motivates the player, uh, gives them something to look forward to, uh, makes them play defense actually, and focus on that. Um, and so I like, we like to split up our practices uh, that way, not just focus on offense winning, but we like to focus on defense winning. Um, pada latihan, uh, Coach Steve akan um, bisa melakukan uh, scrimmage uh, dengan uh, orientasinya adalah menang secara defense. Uh, jadi dia bisa motivasi pemain untuk kasih target, misalkan uh, bisa lima stop, enam stop, tujuh uh, atau uh, sebanyak mungkin stop sehingga uh, uh, jika dengan mencapai beberapa stop itu maka timnya akan menang. Jadi uh, bisa bisa so they can score like easily because they have better defense or uh, just that they're focused on the only way that they can win this game or drill is they have to play defense yeah. that they're focused on their defense yeah. that's the only way jadi para fokusnya defense maka coach Steve juga akan memberikan evaluasi uh, bagaimana cara mereka melakukan defense karena fokusnya adalah uh, winning on defense mm -hmm. and I believe that those type of drills make it more competitive because the offense is really trying hard to score so they, they can get back on defense. So I think I, I love playing defensive uh, oriented drills. Dengan, uh, dengan drill yang uh, orientasinya defense ini maka uh, akan membuat uh, lawan mereka kesulitan melakukan offense sehingga uh, pemain bisa paham bahwa dengan defense yang kuat ini mereka akan punya lebih banyak kesempatan untuk melakukan uh, offense. And then the next one uh, is winning the 50-50 battle, uh, the loose ball battle. Okay, the ball is bouncing around, it's in the middle. Uh, I'm here and somebody's right next to me. Who's going to get it, right? Uh, so we're a big believer in uh, giving the energy and the effort and the fight to go get that ball. Uh, we like to win 50-50 battles and we like to track that as well. Uh, not only in practices, but games. Uh, who's really hustling and giving effort and who's coming up with the loose ball because I think that uh, not only does it show your identity as, as your team, but it also helps you win games. The more the team that gets the most loose balls normally is in the game or is winning the game. That's something I've really noticed. Um, winning the 50-50 battle. Who gets the most loose balls? Who gets who the can most win the games? Untuk mm -hmm. uh, winning the 50-50 battle ini, jadi boleh di tengah tengah itu. Apa boleh? So the uh, the team that has more uh, rebounds, like not necessarily the rebounds. So the ball could be loose. The ball is bouncing, oh, and it's oh, between oh, okay. the other team and me to go get the ball. Okay. Who's gonna go get it? That's a 50-50. Uh, he has a 50% chance. I have a 50% chance to go get that basketball. Oh, Who's gonna yeah. win that battle? Who's gonna win that battle? Jadi, jadi uh, untuk Uh, yang dimaksud dengan winning the 50-50 battle ini uh, latihannya bisa dengan misalkan entah itu rebound atau bolanya sedang bouncing dan uh, tim A bisa punya uh, bolanya nggak nggak di possessionnya nggak di salah satunya maka siapa yang bisa dapetin bola itu lebih maka akan uh, memenangkan pertandingan jadi siapa yang mau punya extra effort untuk ambil bola yang 50-50 itu dan semakin banyak dia dapat uh, bola yang 50-50 itu maka uh, tim itu yang akan punya chance lebih besar untuk menang. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is the extra effort plays. So we call this uh, EEP uh, and we track this not only obviously at practice but in games. Um, and this is similar to the 50-50 uh, but this is just a player that does anything possible on defense for the team to win by like hustling for a loose ball, grabbing a bunch of rebounds, taking charges, deflections, what we call deflections, getting your hand on passes, tipping the ball, not reaching, but tipping the ball in the lane, in the passing lanes, uh, just making extra effort plays, saving a ball, a loose ball out of bounds for your team. 
And one thing we've noticed in our scrimmages that we've had versus other teams uh, early on in this, in this uh, training camp is that the players with the highest number of extra effort plays that we stat are usually the players that have the best games on our team. Um, and so most of our scrimmages that we played, anybody that's had a high number of extra effort plays, EEP, they have actually been probably the best player on the court that game. Uh, the extra effort play plays ini, uh, hampir mirip yang winning the 50-50 battle ini. Uh, namun poin nomor satunya adalah uh, bagaimana uh, pemain bisa hustle dalam uh, melakukan uh, defense melakukan defense. Jadi uh, karena charge mm-hmm. offensive foul taking offensive foul taking the charge taking the charge. Mm-hmm. Oh, dan dengan melakukan jadi yang dia maksud uh, contoh uh, contohnya dari IIP ini bagaimana pemain melakukan deflection kayak gangguin apa uh, tangannya selalu berada di atas uh, mengganggu lawan dalam uh, membawa bola terus tipping Tipping the ball, uh, tidak reach, tidak not jumping. Um, just just getting your hands on the ball. Yeah. Just getting your hands. Tipping the ball, pokoknya intinya mau melakukan hustle untuk uh, lebih mengganggu lawan, uh, menunjukkan extra effortnya dan pemain yang punya uh, statistik EEP uh, paling tinggi ini biasanya adalah pemain yang uh, ter, uh, melakukan uh, like the MVP, like the best player on the team. Usually, that's what we've said. We said oh, that yeah. that player with the most uh, statted is the best player on the court that yeah. day. Bagi coach Steve, uh, bagi coach Steve itu pemain yang EEP-nya paling tinggi adalah pemain yang uh, paling baik dalam game tersebut. Jadi yang mau hustle, yang mau selalu ganggu, yang uh, mau selalu uh, uh, mau ngambil chance lebih untuk um, meraih bola. Okay, so that's our defensive identity. We can go to the next uh, clip now. Mm, yeah. So this is kind of a fun and interactive uh, thing for you guys to think about. Uh, we're going to go back to this video or this uh, this uh, screenshot here uh, later in our talk. But this is a lineup of five players on our team. Uh, you have Ishman, Adit, Restu. Uh, Devin and Indra, and um, what's, what type of defense would you run with this team? Uh, what do you think could work with this type of lineup? Um, and so this is something that you guys can get uh, interactive with us and answer uh, to us later. Uh, ini, ini game sederhana aja dari Coach Dev. Uh, bisa di-capture mungkin ya. Mungkin bagaimana uh, teman-teman nanti uh, dengan pemain lineup ini, apa yang akan uh, teman-teman lakukan uh, secara defense. Jadi ini cuma game sederhana aja. Mungkin nanti di akhir uh, diskusi bisa kita uh, tanyain deh siapa yang punya ide apa uh, dengan uh, komposisi pemain seperti ini. So we'll come back to this. Yeah. Okay. Next. And here's here's another one. Uh, this one is obviously a bunch of NBA players. So you got Katie. You got Giannis, you got CP3, you got Steph, and you got Jokic. Um, so it's a pretty interesting lineup. Um, and I, I'm curious to hear what you guys uh, are going to say about this lineup and what you could do with this type of lineup. Um, and so we'll come back to this one as well. Mungkin ini juga bisa di-capture sama teman-teman dengan komposisi pemain-pemain NBA ini. Kira-kira apa yang akan kita lakukan dengan uh, pemain-pemain ini. Jadi bisa di-capture nanti di akhir sesi bisa kita atau uh, penasaran uh, ide dari teman-teman uh, akan seperti apa? Okay. All right. Okay. So now we get into the statistical part. Uh, as coaches, again, guys, this can be anything that you feel uh, relates to your success or uh, to what caters to your team. So this is just what we do here and uh, what I've learned over my time coaching, which is uh, which translates to winning and translates to good defense. So these are my stats. Oh, ini, uh, ini tadi yang disebut uh, kunci katangannya. Uh, kunci good defense uh, nya Coach Dev. Dia sih punya ini, apa rebounding margin, harus nomor tiga, dan positionnya juga, ya transition juga, opponent's three point percentage-nya juga. Jadi uh, mungkin ini juga bisa di-capture sama teman-teman, atau nanti mungkin dibagikan juga sama Mbak Pika ya. Oh. 
it's it depends on the coach, right? If, yeah, it depends on what you feel is the best yeah. stat for your team. But I we we look at these yeah. as uh, translating in success yeah. for defense. I think dilihat oleh coach Steph sebagai translasi kemenangan dalam defense. Tapi setiap pelatih pasti punya beberapa apa target dan goals yang masing-masing. Jadi ini dari menurut coach Steph. So quickly, um, rebounding margin. You want to obviously win the battle on the boards. Uh, I believe that since I've been a player, and I know that rebounding translates to winning. So we take it very serious. And you want to be uh, the top half of your league, so top three in the league uh, in rebounding. Uh, and what that does is uh, limit the other team's possessions. Um, basketball is about possessions: how many possessions you can get, how many chances you can score. And uh, if you limit a team to possessions and make it a one and out, so one shot and they don't get another one, um, you have a high chance to win that game. Nah, untuk rebounding marginnya, bagaimana bisa uh, top uh, ke atas? Uh, Oke, okay. top three, gimana caranya bisa jadi top three rebounding margin dalam uh, sebuah liga dan mengurangi uh, possession dari lawan? Karena basketball is about possession. It's about possession. How many you can get? Bagaimana? And, uh, uh, seberapa banyak yang bisa kita dapat posisinya uh, will translate to winning. Correct. That's bisa, what we believe in. Itu gimana cara dia percaya terhadap uh, olahraga bola basket. The next one is transitional points allowed per game. Uh, one thing as you guys coaches you guys know is the easiest way to score is in transition. Uh, there's not really too much of a science to it. Uh, if you can get a bunch of transition points it makes the game a bit easier for you. Uh, So what we believe in is if we can stop the transition, uh, we can uh, not allow uh, many transition points in a game and make a team play in the half court. They have to set up their offense and beat us in the half court. Uh, we believe that we have a better chance of winning, um, forcing a team to beat us in the half court instead of playing a game in transition uh, where it's easier baskets. Jadi, buat batasi, Uh, poin dari transisi uh, dari lawan terhadap tim kita karena menurut dia lebih lebih sulit untuk uh, lawan untuk menyerang kita saat kita set play daripada uh, transisi tapi kita juga harus punya target bahwa uh, lawan tidak boleh uh, mendapatkan poin dari transisi. And then the last one is opponents three point percentage. You want uh, you want to be the top three in the league with that. Uh, meaning that you want their percentages to be low. You play when they play against you. You want to be in the top three in the league because obviously the game is about three point shots. Uh, if team kills you at the three point line, it's very hard uh, to win those games, especially when they get in the double digits. Um, so if you're able to uh, make it a low percentage uh, shooting night for those teams, uh, you have a better chance of winning. Uh, instead of giving up threes, you're you're only allowing twos. Uh, look. Uh, menurut Coach Steve, kita uh, harus me menahan lawan melakukan 3 point. Jadi uh, bagaimana membuat uh, presentasi 3 point lawan itu serendah mungkin uh, dan targetnya Coach Steve selalu berada di top 3 sebagai tim yang uh, bisa membuat uh, tim lawannya uh, rendah 3 point percentage-nya. Ya, oke. Dan then some things that I like to stat on my own. Uh, in-house more so like our staff stats it uh, then we share we share with the team later is we want to lead the league in deflections it's not a stat that uh, that FIBA gives you uh, but we basically track how many times we can get our hand on the pass so it doesn't mean reaching it doesn't mean slapping it means hitting the ball in the passing lane skip passes getting your hand on the ball um, changing the path of the ball to, to go somewhere else Uh, we believe that that takes team out of rhythm and uh, it forces our players to get their hands up on defense and use their hands and use their length and their size. Um, and so we preach deflections on our team. Uh, untuk Coach uh, Steve, dia punya statistik sendiri tentang uh, deflection. Tadi cara gimana pemain bisa gangguin, uh, it's like tipping just... just the ball. Uh, right. Getting your hands on the ball. Yeah. Yep. Gimana caranya pemain bisa uh, gangguin saat tim lawan menyerang, uh, Positif akan punya statistik untuk pemain-pemainnya siapa yang paling uh, banyak melakukan deflection uh, dan ini memotivasi pemain-pemain untuk melakukan itu agar menjadi tim yang memimpin uh, secara deflections dan ya yeah. yeah. 
And uh, the other one I like to do, although it's difficult here in this league and also over, I just, in my time in Asia, because they don't reward it so much is the offensive foul taking a charge, but I still do believe in it. Putting your body on the line, it says a lot about the player. It also says a lot about the team. You're willing to take it in the chest and fall backwards and maybe hurt yourself, maybe hit your head, maybe hit your elbow. Um, but drawing offensive fouls is a big deal. It changes momentum. It gives your team energy. Uh, it, it changes a lot um, for the mentality of the game, the psyche. And uh, one thing I used to love to do was get in front of somebody and take a charge and look over at my team and they're, you know, cheering for me, going crazy, uh, excited for me. And I think it, it changes the momentum in the game when you're able to do that. Untuk ini, uh, bagaimana membuat uh, musuh melakukan offensive foul? Jadi, gimana caranya uh, uh, goalsnya dari Costa adalah kita uh, karena kita defense yang baik maka uh, memaksa musuh untuk uh, melakukan offensive foul dengan cara ya uh, pasang badan, ya melakukan hal-hal yang uh, physical. Next yeah, it just later. shows it shows your your character shows what your team is about. Yeah, menunjukkan yeah. Uh, karena tadi udah identitasnya Coach Dave sudah dijelasin tadi dia uh, physicality kompetitif maka dengan uh, defense yang sang, defense yang baik maka akan memaksa tim lawan uh, ada kemungkinan drone untuk uh, melakukan offensive calls. Okay. Right, next one. What is that? Okay, next one. Do we have time to go through this? Yeah, you still have to do it. Yeah. We can just run through it. Okay. Um, quickly, okay? We'll just run through this. I'm not going to go into every uh, breakdown of it because I don't want to have you guys uh, here for the whole night. Um, so I'm just going to say the main words, and then we're going to share this with you guys after so you guys can read this uh, on your own and translate it on your own. Okay. Uh, bagi oleh Coach Dave, uh, beberapa poin-poin utama yang uh, akan dibagikan oleh Coach Dave, seperti itu. Ini bisa dibagikan uh, dan dibaca oleh teman-teman kemudian. So you were going to share your video, ya? Yeah? yeah, I'll share my video. But I want to just say the words, each word, uh, mm -hmm. and then and then we can go, we can move on. Okay? Yeah. So this is Power of Five. Uh, this is what we believe in. We show this to the team at the beginning of the year. Uh, we... We want to let, let them know that uh, this is important to us, and obviously five people in the quarter at a time. So we want to talk about the power of five. No, the same one. Jadi ini ada kekuatan lima power of five. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Coach Dave akan membacakan satu-satu, tapi dia akan uh, lebih uh, cepat dalam menjelaskan dan uh, akan membagikan beberapa video untuk bisa lebih dipahami. So don't reach is number one. Uh, deflections is number two. Stay down and wall up is number three. Uh, number four is compete. And uh, number five is extra effort, energy, and aggression. Uh, these are some of the things that we've already talked about. So those are the, those are the five. Jadi yang pertama, don't reach. Jangan uh, melakukan gerakan kayak meraih itu. Lalu deflection tadi udah dijelasin. Stay down or, stay down or wall up. Uh, tetap uh, ya jangan loncat ke, jangan uh, loncat untuk uh, shot fakes maupun juga jangan loncat saat lawan memang nembak ataupun uh, melakukan fake dengan yeah, fake uh, lalu compete tadi uh, compete itu kompetisi. berkompetisi yeah. and then extra effort ya yeah. uh, usaha lebih energi dan agresif Okay. All right, next one. Okay, and again, these are some of the things that you guys can read up on, and I'll explain these as I'm explaining the videos, okay? All right, so we'll, uh, guys, we'll, we'll keep going here. We'll keep rolling. Maybe we'll fix it in a second, but uh, if we can, we'll share the videos with you as well. I'll try to give an explanation for that. Um, wait, yep, this one. Okay, this one, here you go. So now we're going to talk about some man-to-man -man principles. Uh, so that I was going to show you some videos and what we do uh, at practice, some of our daily drills, uh, but we'll talk about it here. Um, we will be, um, 
Okay, we'll be multiple, we'll switch a lot uh, when we find it reasonable. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about with, uh, with my team and probably a lot of your teams that you coach, uh, depending on what level you're at. Um, specifically the young level, you can switch a lot more, um, but we like to be multiple. We like to run zone, we like to run man, we like to press, we like to switch. Uh, we like to throw a lot at people. So we like to be multiple in our principles. Ya, dengan uh, tadi dengan komposisi pemain yang lebih lengkap tadi kita bisa ngelakuin ini secara lebih uh, kita bisa multiple dan bisa berganti semakin banyak uh, selama itu dirasa reasonable selama itu dirasa uh, bisa dilakukan dan uh, kondisinya memungkinkan. Our team is uh, not a shot blocking team. Uh, if you do have people that shot block and are good at it, then uh, depends on how you coach. My belief is if you leave your feet, uh, there's more likely a time that you're going to foul. Uh, we believe in second jumper. So jumping second, letting the offense to jump first and you jump second. Um, and then playing with verticality. So being straight up, walling straight up, uh, not bringing your arms down. Um, but we want to stay on our feet and wall up. And what we tell our team is if they make it, who cares? As long as you wall up. If they miss it, uh, great, but we don't care. We don't want to foul. We want to keep our arms straight up. Jadi uh, tim kita bukanlah tim yang uh, melakukan block terhadap shooting. Jadi uh, selalu menekankan kepada pemain-pemain bahwa uh, jangan sampai loncat uh, uh, dalam uh, nggak usah berusaha untuk ngeblok karena kita bukan uh, tim yang melakukan uh, Shot blocking, uh, karena mungkin size ya atau uh, kemampuan loncat juga. Jadi yang dilakukan adalah we will work on staying uh, down, tetap uh, tetap di grounded, tetap di uh, grounded, tidak yeah. nggak nggak usah loncat dan um, secara wow. verticality sebagai tembok kayak tembok itu setinggi se, setinggi mungkin uh, pemain bisa uh, mengangkat tangannya setinggi mungkin dan tetap uh, walling, jadi nggak maju, nggak maju, jadi tembok. Okay, so that's something to think about. Uh, square stance on defense. This is something uh, we like to preach is the stance that we have on defense, uh, and we want to uh, be square. And the other thing we want to make sure is uh, that we're arms length. So something we talk about is a stick hand. All right, mm -hmm. so being arms length from your defender. Uh, one thing I noticed uh, through my time coaching uh, overseas is guys like to get too close. They like to play way, way too tight as defense, and it's it's very easy to foul or for somebody to go around you. Uh, we like to play at an arm's length at always, so your arm's able to uh, feel the, the offensive player, feel the ball, be close enough to it, but don't be too close. Uh, uh, did he? Uh, square stance on defense and always at an um, arm's length ini posted uh, dalam latih pemain-pemain mem uh, bagaimana mereka uh, memberi jarak uh, satu tangan jadi jangan kejauhan jangan kedekatan juga karena akan beresiko melakukan foul dan uh, selalu siap untuk jump ready to jump okay. Uh, dan jangan terlalu uh, dekat uh, pada pembawa bola tadi karena stick hand. stick hand. You have one hand up and one hand down. So you yeah. don't use your stick hand, stick hand for the arms like this. This is the hand that tracks the basketball. So wherever the basketball is, you have one hand that tracks the basketball and then you have the other hand free. Oh, jadi ada satu tangan yang selalu ngikutin gerakan bola. Itu yang dia maksud dengan uh, stick hand. Jadi uh, untuk mengganggu Correct. Okay, so that's something we do. Our principles on defense, uh, how we want to play on the ball. Uh, the next thing is we want to pressure the ball. Uh, when we're when we're in man to man, one thing we want to do is we want to eliminate uh, the point guard. We want to take him out of the game. We want to take him out of the rhythm. Uh, most coaches, even myself. Uh, my, a lot of my offense is relied on my point guard to get us in our sets, to get us in our plays. And what we want to do is we want to deny that player as much as possible, take him away, and force the other team to use another ball handler to bring the ball up to court um, and disrupt their offense. Uh, 
real pressure the basketball most of it. Ya, bagaimana uh, tim yang ditangani coach Dev uh, harus melakukan uh, pressure tekanan kepada lawan secara terus menerus uh, karena dengan begitu bisa mengganggu tim lawan uh, mengganggu sistem tim lawan uh, dan seperti misalkan menjaga, menjaga point guard secara full court maka akan memaksa tim lawan untuk uh, bo- hmm? di atas. Okay, all right. So that's something else we're thinking of. Um, speaking of transition defense, uh, one thing I've learned over my time being at different coaching clinics around the world and some really good coaches is they're what they preach about transition defense. If we want to be a good transition defensive team, then we have to work on our first three steps. And uh, that's what it's all about is our first three steps. Uh, when we shoot the ball, whether make or miss, we focus as a team, we focus on our first three steps, getting back on defense, turning and running hard, one, two, three, and then we're able to turn around and look and find uh, a player in transition. And the last point to that is, there is no my man in transition. A lot of players like to say, oh, my man's over here. Well, you just take the closest man to you. There is no my man in transition. Just take the closest man to you. Untuk uh, transisi defense ini uh, tidak ada istilah my man. Jadi tidak ada uh, siapa yang paling dekat, dialah yang harus uh, mengambil bola. Jadi tidak ada, oh tadi misalkan uh, si A jaga si B, maka ini sudah tidak berlaku. Dan untuk transition, siapa yang paling dekat, uh, dia yang harus langsung melakukan penjagaan. Uh, you're getting back on defense, so you shoot the ball, and then you turn around. You want to take a hard three steps as fast as you possibly can, mm-hmm. and then turn around on defense. A lot of players like to sit and watch their shot. A lot of players like to stand and wait and keep their feet flat. We like to get three hard steps back, and then we can turn around, and that helps our transition defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, jadi, uh, ketika habis melakukan offense, dan uh, bisa turn over, Bagaimana, bagaimana uh, tiga langkah pertama ini sangat penting untuk melakukan uh, defense uh, transisi defense transisi. Uh, it's like moral, or like or mentally. It's a mentality. Yeah. It's what you oh. practice and you coach and you tell them every single day. Ini yeah. lebih ke seperti kayak istilah untuk uh, mengangkat mentality pemain-pemain agar uh, habis melakukan kesalahan bukan kesalahan sih attempt dan mungkin belum berhasil mereka harus uh, Tiga langkah pertama coba lakukan yang terbaik maka uh, itu akan sangat membantu dalam uh, transisi defense. Uh, another video I was going to show you guys was how we guard the post. Uh, it's three quarter fronting. A lot of you coaches already know that. Uh, and basically, you want to get on the half side or basically almost three quarters around the, the defender, uh, the post player. Um, and we never allow an easy post up. Uh, if they pass the ball into the post, it's going to be a difficult catch in the post. It's going to be a difficult post up that we want to push out as far as possible. Um, and this one is no excuses. Uh, you want to fight as much as you can to get around and force that to be a difficult post up. Um, yang, uh, it's like no excuses on what? Like... Allowing the pass to come in easy. Oh, gimana caranya? Tidak boleh ada passing Easy passing? Yeah, easy catch. So you want to guard this person really hard so it's not an easy catch. You don't want to just stand behind them and let them catch the ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mempersulit uh, bagaimana uh, bis, uh, mempersulit uh, lawan dalam... Uh, jadi bagaimana saya lawan itu tidak mudah dalam uh, dapetin bola. Jadi walaupun even if they're not uh, uh, with the ball, Correct. everyone is all... Because they're posting up asking oh, for the ball. Yeah. They're asking for the ball. Jadi nggak cuma fokus ke yang bawa bola, uh, baik pemain yang uh, tidak membawa bola dan dia minta untuk bola juga harus digangguin. Nggak uh, boleh sampai mereka mendapatkan bola dengan mudah. Okay. Uh, control closeouts, no flybys, uh, game plan specific. So we want to be controlled. When I first got over to Asia, uh, not just Indonesia, a lot of the players that I inherited, they the ball would swing and they start to run to close out and they just run right past the player. They go for the shot fake. They'd be going so fast that they didn't control their feet. Uh, they didn't chop their feet and they didn't close out correctly. Uh, we believe in keeping the ball in front of us, um, making people shoot over our hand. Um, so we don't want to fly past them. 
uh, we want controlled closeouts. Ya, uh, gimana caranya tim kita selalu melakukan uh, close out terhadap lawan, tidak ada bola yang uh, mudah lewat dari kita. What do you mean by different specific? Uh, depending on who we're playing, we'll close out differently to those players. Dan uh, dan ini akan tergantung juga uh, pemain pemain mana yang karakter uh, tipikal bermain lawan kita, uh, karena ini akan mempengaruhi gaya close out kita juga. Intinya no fly by, no easy. Don't run right past them. You got to keep the ball in front of you. Keep okay. the ball in front of you. Jaga bola uh, tetap di depan kita, enggak ada yang uh, mudah lewat uh, dari kita. Okay. Uh, again, so like we told you guys before, and we were going to show it in the video as well. Uh, being, uh, being in uh, help, being in help on on the basket line. Some people call it the basket line. We call it home, um, and that's the rim that we protect. Uh, so that's the house, that's our house, right? We protect our home. We want somebody at home at all times uh, that's able to protect uh, the paint area for us. Um, so we call that home. Yeah, untuk uh, di, tadi yang disebut sama Coach Steve, protect our home. Correct. Uh, gimana ya? Gimana uh, being in help on the basket line is for jadi. Bagaimana rotasi defense? Like defense rotation, right? Yes, yeah, on the weak side. Most of the time, you're always on the weak side at home. Yeah, that's uh, correct. Uh, sebagian besar waktu kita uh, harus ada yang mau uh, membantu untuk mengisi rumah uh, yang kosong tadi. Memang ini agak sulit dijelasin kalau nggak pakai video. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to okay. copy the video. Okay. Next lagi. Next Nanti one. kita jelasin lewat video ya. ini. Kita lagi coba. Okay, so I'll just run through these quickly. I'll just say them and then we'll talk about them quick. Again, these were some of the things we were going to go through on video. Uh, so number one is gap focus. Uh, we like to play in the gap uh, on defense. So this is talking about help, where our help comes from. Uh, we like to be in the gap. So when the ball handler has the ball, we like our players to be in the gap. So basically halfway between their man and between the ball. Uh, being able to stunt at the ball, taking a step at the ball when it drives at you, and then getting back to your man. So being in the gap between, yeah, between the ball and your man. Gap, uh, gap itu uh, kayak jarak yang uh, we like to be in the gap on defense. Yes. It's not being, like... being, between, being between the ball and the man. So if the ball the man is here, if you're on defense, you're right here in the middle. Oh. In between, in between. Jadi bagaimana uh, kita uh, berada di uh, antara orang yang membawa bola dan yang uh, tidak bawa bola. Jadi just be in the gap, uh, beradalah di gap itu jadi bisa ngangguin yang bawa bola dan bisa uh, nge-span gimana melakukan gerakan span uh, untuk uh, agar tidak bisa nge on drives. Yes. Yeah. The ball and dribbling, when they're dribbling the basket. Uh, jadi saat exactly. mereka bawa bola juga. Okay. okay. So that's the that's the gap focus. Obviously, I just told you guys about closeout rules and mentality, so we went through that, and we can uh, we can talk about that further. But the same thing is, no no flybys, keep the ball in front on closeouts. Okay, kita coba. We talked. We spoke about closeout rules. It's the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, not letting people fly past you, keeping the ball in front when you close out, being controlled when you close out. Ya, uh, gimana uh, tadi udah dibahas juga soal close out. Bagaimana kita tidak ini ya. So the point is you're not allowing anyone or the ball is just easy. You're not letting them go past you. You're okay. keeping them in front of you. Buat ini ya jaga itu semua ada di depan kita. Jadi we're, we're in control ya. Kita yang mengendalikan. Yes, we're not running past the player. We're staying in front of the player. Ya, kita selalu siap di depan pemain dan Oke, jaga bola dan orang yang kita jaga itu ada di depan kita sehingga kita in control dan mereka nggak mudah untuk uh, passing by, by by. Ini there have the video. Oke. Okay. Folder. Oke, okay, I should go over there. Bola? Yeah, I'm gonna go over there. Yeah. Oke. Okay. I don't know, you just hear the jargon. But they don't. Bola? Yeah. Ini kan harus dicepet-cepetin gitu loh. Oke. Oke. Ini kostel bergeser dulu. 
Oke, okay, uh, sambil menunggu Coach Dave ya. Tadi teman-teman sudah nge-screenshot uh, slide yang What's the Defense? Kalau teman-teman sudah, tadi kan ini sampai materi man to man ini apakah teman-teman sudah kebayang ya? Ada kalau di BPJ tadi di-share tentang Mas Isman Toyib. Dia punya size gede tinggi terus ada mas restu dia bisa cepat tinggi juga setelah ada mas restu ada juga mas adit mas adit itu cepat dia physical juga punya fisik terus ada samuel devin cepat physical physical juga terus ada satu lagi indra muhammad Gitu. Jadi, oh, coba teman-teman, mungkin teman-teman bisa, ah ini dia videonya, bisa ya. Oke, okay. cool. Ya, sambil dipikirkan, what kind of defense yang paling bagus buat BPJ. Dan juga ini sudah di-share ya video dari teman-teman, dari Coach Dave ini. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, coach. Oke, okay. tuh maaf ya teman-teman. Ini ada uh, technical issues ya. Uh, ini teman-teman tim BPJ. Can you can you? Yeah yeah. Now now you can. You can hear me now? Yeah. 
Okay, hello guys. Sorry about that. Okay, we're trying to run through this quick. Okay, so this is our wall of drill. All right, uh, it's a three pass drill. You pass it one to the first player and you chest up. Okay, so we want our player to close out, use their chest with no hands. And then they do three, they do it three times. They close out, boom. All right, so Indra needs to get his hand out of there and uh, get vertical. Okay, and then the last part of it is a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? All right, you play a one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so let's watch this, let's just watch this again. Okay, so Indra closes out, chest, mm -hmm. okay, closes out, chest, hands up, and then he plays David one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, and right there he reached down, so he's got to do a better job of staying vertical. Okay, he reached down there. Okay, watch another one. Okay, so we chest, boom. David does a good job here. Boom, walling up. And then he plays one-on-one. -on -one. That's a really good job there. And then you want your player to go secure the rebound. Okay, so that's just one drill that we do. Um, we like to do it every week a couple of times just to uh, re reiterate the importance of playing without your hands and walling up and using your feet and your chest. Right? Me drill and wall up, yeah. Okay, so this is one. Um, Okay, so this is one that we call a verticality drill. I took this drill from the Golden State Warriors five years ago. Um, so when we do jump, players will jump, they'll never not jump uh, in a game. And so when they do, we want to talk about being vertical and staying straight up okay, not crossing that path uh, and not bringing your arms down, okay? So we want to teach going straight up on challenges. Okay, right there. We want to go straight up with our hands up. He should have his other hand up right now, two hands up. Okay, being vertical. That's good there, okay? Hands a little bit too far down, but he can be more vertical. Yang barusan tadi agak turun ya tangannya Indra. Harusnya lebih vertical. Okay, and then we just go around. I like to do it two times each. Okay? So here's Ishman. There we go. You want to time your jump correctly, guys. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. Perfect form, perfect technique. Okay, right to there. Okay, so that's something else we do um, every week to try to uh, keep pushing the focus of being vertical and being straight up. Okay, so this is a two-on-two closeout. Um, this is a drill here uh, that, that makes you guard the ball initially, play in the gaps as well, and then you're going to have to also get home and play on the weak side. So if you watch here, they play on the ball, Reza gets in the gap, he can be over a little bit more. We get another reversal, and then now we have to move with the ball. Now we have to move with the ball. Okay, so then we get a swing, and then we get an attack. Okay, and what has to happen is our home help. Here's our home. Okay, Ali is underneath the basket, and he's protecting our home. Itu yang dimaksud dengan home di bawah uh, ring. Ada di kursor ya, coach dia. Okay, our second player, Reza, has the first pass out. So he's going to take wherever the ball goes first, he's going to take that pass. Reza standby untuk uh, uh, passing bolanya uh, kemana dia harus belajar bola duluan. Ambil bola pertama. Okay, so we get a pass there. Now Reza has to take the ball. And Ali will take the next guy. 
Okay. This is a hard one because Reza has to go on gallon. All right, he's got to wall up and fight. Okay, but you guys see Ali gets in there and hustles. It helps. Okay. 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 All right. So that's that's an example of our two on two closeout. Okay, here's another one quickly. We get a drive, we get a stunt, we get back, and we play one on one. Okay, right there. And we secure the rebound. Always secure the rebound. Okay, so that's an example of what we do for two on two closeout. Okay, I'm sure several of you coaches around the world or in Indonesia run shell drill. Okay, we also do as well. All right. So we're, we're working on passing and cutting. We're bumping the cutter. We're hitting. Okay. And then we're playing our defense with our stance, our stick hand, okay, and our bent knees. And you guys see Galang is home. Okay, Galang is home. Okay. Now we get the ball reversal. Okay, we continue to move, we play here, we bump the cutters, and we play. Okay, so this is us uh, in Shell understanding our rotations and movement. Okay. All right, we're gonna get to the, the last part here is, what, what do you do when you're beat? Okay. So we have to rotate. So right here, we start from the trail position. So we put our defender behind the ball handler. Ini posisi kalau kalau apa kalau secara bola adit di adit sebagai defender ada di belakang Devin yang membawa bola. Okay. So our home help has to take the ball carrier. So Galang steps up and takes the ball. All right. Just like the, the two on two, the guy on the outside takes the first pass. Okay, so Alvin takes the pass, and then Adi, the guy who got beat, will now exit out and take the next pass. Okay, you guys see that? All right, and that's a drill that we work on uh, daily. Okay, and it's something you guys can do uh, with your teams as well. First pass, and then we play there. Okay? All right. All right. This is this has to do with our stunting and talking. Okay, and then this is what we talk about fronting the post, three-quartering the post. Okay, if you guys see here, Galong is gonna fight for the post, and he's not gonna allow an easy catch. Okay. All right, so here we go. So we want to be in the gap, we want to be in the lane, and we want to stunt to the ball and get back. Ini yang dimaksud stun yang Alvin and Indra ya? Yeah, it's Restu and Indra here. Oh, Restu, Restu. And what we want to do is we want to make, see the ball carrier see bodies. Okay. See bodies on the drive. Right? And they kick it out, we close out, he drives again, I see stunts, and gets back. Right? Same thing here. Drive, stunts, and gets back. As you guys see here, Gallon is three-quartering the post, no easy catches. Okay, and this is something we can do. Takes you five minutes every day of practice uh, to, to put in their brains to stunt. Ini yang dilakukan Coach Steve uh, tiap hari agar uh, pemain terbiasa dengan uh, stunt tadi. All right, so the same thing we did in Shell. Now we play games. All right, Tim, you can say this. So this game uh is defensive based the only way you can win is if you get stops 
Okay. So it's five on four. You start behind and you have to get back into the play and get a stop. So it's, so it's, it turns in, it starts as five on four and it turns into five on five. Jadi uh, permainan ini uh, dimulai dengan uh, empat pemain yang menjaga, walaupun nanti yang Adit nyusul kan, ya. Nanti Adit yang posisinya selalu uh, ketinggalan, ketinggalan dari pembawa bola. Jadi bagaimana yang defense di bawah ini bisa helping ke atas? Okay. So we get the drive here, Galan steps up and helps. And then we get Indra exiting out. And we play 505. Okay. And this is this is a good example here of us not over Okay. So we drive, Indra stunts and gets back. And gets his hand on the pass and gets a deflection. So, tadi contoh uh, Indra melakukan stun menutup uh, Devin yang bawa bola sehingga Devin mau nggak mau uh, akan passing dan Indra melakukan deflection sehingga dapat uh, bolanya. Right. So that's a drill we work on every day and we make it a defensive uh, base drill you have to win by getting stops on defense. Jadi pemenangnya adalah yang uh, bisa melakukan stops on defense ya coach. Oke. Okay. Alright, this is our ball screen defense. So 505 half court working on our defending the ball screen. Uh, basketball nowadays is all about ball screens. So you got to know how to defend it. You got to practice it. Okay. So we run uh, blue coverage, and we want to send the ball into the big man. Okay. And this is just an example of us playing uh, ball street. Okay, good pass by the offense. Let's do one more quick one here. Okay, so guys, again, as you see, we want to send the ball down to our big guy, all right? And we want to be weak side. As you see, Reza here is home, okay? And then watch his close out. Okay, it's a good one. Right there, control. Okay, he stops the drive. He stays in front. Same thing with Ali. Ali's in a good position here. Okay. Okay, so that's something we do every day. Uh, it's defensive based, and again, you have to win by getting stops. Sama ini gamenya yang menang adalah yang bisa mengatikan lawan. This zone, correct? Okay, balik ke four point yang itu. Aduh, sayang sekali ini. Yeah, just here. Four point lagi ya. Four point yang zoom. Four point. Okay, so those are some of the things, guys. Uh, that are our man-to-man -man drills principles. We have a lot more things that we do. Of course, we don't have enough time to do them uh, or to show you them. Uh, but so those are some of the daily drills that we focus on. Uh, we build from, like you saw, man-to-man, -man, two on two. Uh, we have three on three and then four on four, and then we go all the way to five on five. Okay, so those are some of the ways that we do it. Um, and again, we have a lot more uh, to that, but uh, we don't have enough time, okay? yang untuk defense uh, nanti juga akan ada video uh, tadi udah dikasih contoh-contoh video sama coach Steve uh, nanti kita bakal share juga ke email teman-teman uh, peserta semua supaya mungkin tadi kurang jelas secara apa uh, karena mungkin agak 
tersendat-sendat karena uh, koneksi mungkin nanti kita akan share lagi juga uh, dan semoga bisa uh, kalau ada yang ditanyain nanti kita bisa bahas di akhir sesi. Okay. So uh, again, the questions you want to say is why do you run zone? What's the point of it? Uh, is it to change up the, the flow of the game? Uh, is it to help your team out uh, when another team is beating you in a man-to-man -man and you're struggling in the game? You want to switch to a zone. Um, it can bring you some momentum. It can bring you some energy. Um, just to change the pace and switch up. That's one big thing that uh, that I that I like to run zone. That's why I like to run zone. So, kenapa aku sih suka uh, run zone? Karena uh, mungkin uh, ini bisa uh, merubah kecepatan. Change the pace of the game. The game, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jadi bisa mengatur tempo, tempo. Yeah. Okay. Bisa mengatur yeah. tempo permainan. Itu kenapa dia uh, bisa memberikan so, uh, tampilan yang berbeda juga uh, kepada tim lawan. Then switch. Switch to different. Switch to different defense. Yeah. Give them a different look. Show them something different. Yeah. yeah. Um, Again, you can do this at all times. I like to do it throughout every quarter. I like to change to a zone every quarter, just to mix it up on the team. Dia bisa melakukan switch perubahan-perubahan di setiap quarter. Dia akan melakukan perubahan-perubahan untuk jadi ini kasih different look ke tim lawan. Jadi nggak nggak mudah ditebak. Okay, selecting which zone works for you best. A zone that uh, works for your team, whether it's two three, whether it's one two two, whether it's one three one, um, and I want I want people to understand too. I don't know what this says, but I want people to understand that uh, zone. One thing that we talk about when we run zone is it's not about uh, easier. It's not about relaxing. It's not about oh I can take a breath now. Actually, zone you need to be even more focused, and you probably have to give even more energy uh, because it's harder to rebound in. Um, and it requires even more communication. Um, and so one thing I think some players think uh, is that zone is easier and they want to take the easy path. But actually, I look at zone as being even more difficult. Um, and you have to make sure that they focus in uh, when playing zone. Menurut Coach Steve, mungkin beberapa orang melihat dengan zone itu lebih mudah, lebih easy, lebih santai. Padahal sebenarnya menurut Coach Steve, Zone defense itu justru lebih butuh lebih fokus, uh, butuh energi lebih untuk untuk bisa rebound, terus lebih secara komunikasi ya antar uh, defender. Uh, jadi jangan uh, jangan sampai uh, zone defense ini dilihat sebagai uh, cara jaga yang lebih mudah, karena ini sebenarnya orang lebih harus lebih fokus dan harus lebih kasih energinya. Okay, getting that buy-in. I'll talk about this later. Uh, when it comes to giving your full effort in zone. Uh, again, zone could be work really well, and it can work very bad for some other teams, uh, depending on the effort that the team gives, depending on the focus that they have, uh, depending on the attention to detail that they give. And uh, the other thing that I like to tell my players is that most man rules apply in zones. Um, so you must use those and apply those uh, just like closeouts, just like weak side help, Uh, just like being in the gap, um, using your stick hand, all of these same things that we talked about, uh, you don't stop using them in a zone. Okay, so again, all of those rules apply. Jadi, uh, getting by in uh, harus total dalam melakukan zone karena dan uh, yang selalu ditekankan sama plat, uh, coach Steve pada pemain adalah most men rules apply in a zone. Tadi drill drill semua yang uh, coach Oki. Okay, good. Okay. To you, coach. Terima kasih, coach. Okay. Thank you. Jadi, uh, jadi yang dia lakukan uh, tadi drill drill yang close out, being in the gap, berada di jarak uh, di jarak tadi itu juga uh, dan being in on home di yeah, home juga itu juga rules, tadi yeah. drill drill yang sebelumnya mm -hmm. video udah diputar sama coach Steve itu juga berlaku pada zone defense. Okay. So those are some of the things uh, that you want to think about and talk about with your team um, in zone. Okay, that, that's at least what we do. And we're going to show a quick video of our zone. Um, yes, a quick video of our zone uh, and from practice and a game. Yeah, ini yang video menggambarkan zone, latihan zone. Share video. 
Okay, so this is a uh, R zone. Okay. Very steady and open. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, this is us at practice here, uh, looking at it. Um, again, guys, nothing's perfect. People make mistakes. <laughs> there's so many mistakes in this in this zone at practice. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can fix, more details that we need uh, here. Uh, but this is something that we, we work on uh, just so we're comfortable. So this is a one three one set, um, and we don't want to we don't want to allow these passes so easy. So our top guys kind of take away this pass a little bit more and pressure the ball on one side. Okay, but right there, we get somewhat of a steal and deflection from Indra. Okay, uh, and again, there's a lot to work on here. Uh, we have to get better at it, um, but this is the zone that we've selected that works well for our group. Uh, we have many other zones that we use, but this is just one of them. This is just one. Okay. And we, what we wanted to do is show you another one from a game, but uh, we won't do that today. Uh, unfortunately. But again, this is the zone that we use. We practice it. Uh, we work on it daily. Uh, we have different um, rules and we have different uh, schemes for it um, that we won't share with you today. But uh, again, you can be very creative. This allows you to be multiple and this allows your team to have a, a, um, a newfound energy, I believe, when you run zone. Uh, dengan melakukan zone, uh, tadi semua peraturan tetap berlaku latihan-latihan uh, uh, sorry drill-drill yang tadi ditunjukin soal ball up uh, deflection itu juga berlaku di zone maka uh, dan zone enak ya zone uh, kita bisa lebih kreatif bisa lebih kreatif Correct. karena lebih space-nya slower ya karena yeah you can do all types of different things with your zone you can press out of it you can play back press, yeah. you can do anything you like with the zone and so now uh, that's kind of concluded our uh, our slides for today, for tonight. And uh, now I think we're going to move on to the next portion, Pika. Okay.